What's up YouTube? This is Racing1278 just giving you a quick update on hot rodding your Aquion 75 filter. Shout outs to Dustin from Dustin's Fish Tanks. Shout out to Corey from Aquarium Co-op and shout out to John from KG Tropicals. If you have not checked out their channels, do yourself a favor and check it out. They have a lot of very informative videos and live feeds and a lot of times it's fun. I mean the interaction between the three and the live chats whether it be on Facebook or YouTube, um, ask questions, get answers, um, very helpful. And as you know each tank responds differently than someone else's. What works for me may not work for you and vice versa. Um, but back to the filter. One thing that Corey points out is about um, pre-sponges so that when you clean your tank, you don't wind up with all that stuff. Put a pre-filter uh, pre sponge on there, it'll protect the shrimp, it'll protect the fry, and it'll also protect your pump and your impeller. But what I had done was, after this was running for several months, I pulled the motor off, checked the shaft, the shaft was still smooth, wasn't grooved, clean the impeller, clean the magnet, clean the housing, and just that little bit really quieted this down. But what I did also was I got the Marineland um, filtering pads cut to size, Keeping one in that was already established, I took the other, ripped off all that nasty floss because for whatever reason, Aquion's filter is just garbage. It doesn't stand up, it can't be rinsed, it just gets gummy and nasty. So what I did was I cut it and I used the frame in order to recreate their filter. So now I still have the same design with the uh, addition of the floss here to keep that overflow from happening, the bypass happening, and now it flows right through into here. There's duckweed all over because I just got done cleaning um, and moving this around. But with this here, it'll actually catch this duckweed, squeeze it, take it out, rinse it out in the tank water, and put it back in, and that saves a lot. Then, once this was established and had bacteria, I did the same thing on this side, but unfortunately I threw away the original filter, so I had an Aquatec filter that I used, and then at that point I just cut it, got rid of all the floss, and then I cut it to fit the tray right here, and I put in the Marineland uh, bonded floss. Definitely made a difference in keeping my water clean, um, but I took it a step further. Um, I'm, just got to get a pre-filter but what I did was a lot of people tell you that this comb and the plastic is garbage it doesn't do anything but in my opinion it does give an area for beneficial bacteria to grow what I had done was I had checked out somebody else somebody's video and they had shown that I guess Aquion updated this filter I don't know when it happened if it happened recently or if the store was carrying old stock but for $30 versus $60, $70 for an AquaClear 110, I went this way at that point in time. But in the video, they had a sponge that actually fit this tray. So I took that idea and I cut this to fit and I put a sponge in here, or the filtering material in here. So as you can see, I have bacteria growing and it's the same principle uh, for you, those of you who actually fish and do river or stream fishing, as the water cascades over the rock, you see all this forming on the downstream end of the rock. So I've recreated that here by putting this piece of foam in. Also, it's quieted this down. And I noticed the first few months that it was established that the holes would clog up and then you get a heavy splashing sound so you'd have to poke something down in there to clean it. Doing it this way, it's actually quieted this tank down significantly. Um, 
very minor hum from the pump. You're hearing more from my air pump than you are hearing from my filter pump. And to me, this really isn't bad noise. Um, the trickling, if you run your tank within an inch of the rim or more, this is what you'll get. If you go down below an inch or underneath your frame, you're going to get more splash. So in any case, just doing those little things actually created um, more bacteria, um, places to grow, and it also quieted it down. And this is actually the filter pads that I used. Now you can even take it a step farther and add polishing pads in the very front of that filter and that will really make your water pristine which that'll be the next step. Add the pre-filter sponge that'll protect your fry, that'll protect your shrimp and it also increases the filtering capacity of your filter regardless of what filter you have. And um, with this tank, because I do have shrimp in there, I do have a ton of fry in here. Um, it's definitely something I'm going to do going forward. I just haven't gotten around to it. And a way to keep your tank balanced, you know, water changes, testing, um, and planting it heavy. The plants, depending on the plants, whether it's wisteria or um, water sprite or in my case duckweed, uh, guppy grass, those absorb nitrates and it just helps your tank stay healthier longer. Sometimes you can stretch a water change out if you have to, if you just don't have the time. Um, and it definitely makes it clear and it also gives um, your fish a place to rest. It gives them a place to hide. In my case I have um, it was probably my second or third wave of babies. So they actually are all down under here. I have some fire painted shrimp. I have some yellow shrimp. There may be even a few uh, red cherries still in there. But it's a community tank. I run, um, as you can see, there's some babies in there. I run platies, I run Corys, I run coolies, um, octos, amanos, guppies of all different kinds, um, white clouds, head and tail light tetras, diamond tetras, um, what else do I have in here? Uh, neons and cardinals so I definitely have quite a bit of different fish in here and they're all healthy, healthy and happy um, for those that are going to ask um, I had used Flourish Excel, but the cost got ridiculous and it wasn't complete. So you'll find yourself having to either buy iron or phosphate depending on the fish uh, or the plants. So what I had done was um, I do use Flourish root tabs for my Amazons and a few of the other uh, heavy root feeders. And then I use API CO2 booster. I use Prime with every water change and I also dose with Thrive All in One. So making those subtle changes I save money in the long run until I decide to get into CO2. But the Thrive has definitely kicked these plants into overdrive and they're really starting to take off. I'm battling a little bit of algae in there 
Um, so increasing the uh, surface agitation um, and reducing the amount of dosing um, is starting, I'm starting to win the war on algae. So um, there are several videos out there on how to get rid of it. Some of it I don't mind because I have the plecos in there, I have the octos in there, so, um, and the platys, and the guppies actually eat it as well. So uh, hopefully these little tips helped you out. Um, as I mentioned, for those who may not have seen um, some of the videos, when it comes to the sponges or the scrubbies to put in there, just regular sponges, no scents, no acti uh, antibacteria, none of that, just straight up sponges. And you can stick those down in your filter and increase the filtering cap capability, capacity, and surface area. So hopefully you can take some of what I've thrown out to you and adapt it to work in your environment, in your tank, and make life a lot easier for you. And again, make sure you check out Dustin's channel, Corey's channel, and John's channel. Dustin's Fish Tanks, Aquarium Co-op, and KG Tropicals. Um, they definitely have a lot of information that you can take and use bits and pieces or do it, you know, right to the T. Um, so with a lot of their help, it's helped me in the long run as well as watching other YouTube videos and uh, belonging to several different um, Facebook pages. Um, being able to ask questions, you can answer. Uh, this is my first planted tank that I have had in 15 years, 20 years. I did a dirted tank before dirt tanks were considered cool, I guess. Uh, that was a complete nightmare. And I actually worked for a pet store, um, fish store back then, but what did I know, you know? So now with the help of a lot of you on YouTube, a lot of folks on Facebook, I was able to come up with a tank that I enjoy sitting down and relaxing and, and looking at. And actually I know a lot of people too, they, they go on about um, getting driftwood and things like that. You do have to be careful depending on the body of water. Now this piece that I have, I actually got from a local river. And what was cool about that piece is there's actually rocks that had the root or whatever section this was had grown around, so they're still in there. Um, it took forever to try to get it to become waterlogged, and I think it finally is now. I've bumped it a couple times and it hasn't moved, but what I had done, which was dual purpose, was... Oh, there's one of the coolies hanging out. I took rocks and tied rocks with fishing line around here, and then I took the java fern and wrapped it around so it had a place to grow. This actually has to come out, it's starting to die. And then on this side, I took a big piece, a rock, and put it on there like it belonged. So it added to the actual aquascape. These are rocks from the river as well. So the key for that was letting it soak, scrubbing it down real well. Uh, definitely too big to bake, and definitely too big to boil unless you're gonna boil half and half. I put it in a tub, super hot water, and periodically kept throwing boiled water over it um, for two or three days. And then when I put it in the tank, I had no tannis, no nothing. Um, the only thing I did get was the biofilm, which was fine. The shrimp and the other fish were eating it up, and within a couple days, that was gone. Um, then I really started to plant it more and more. Once I started planting it, uh, my parameters stayed in check, um, no spiking um, or anything like that. For this tank, I run it at 7.4 pH and zero ammonia, zero nitrates. And until I put in the wisteria, the Sprite, 
the duckweed and a few other plants, my nitrates were running about 40 parts per million, which some will say that's like the highest of the safe range. Since adding those plants, I'm down between 15 and 20, so it, it definitely worked for me. Um, and with that, um, the cardinals and the neons never had a problem, haven't lost any. They're actually better looking now than when I bought them from the um, pet stores that I got the variety from. And there's, I think, 12, 13, 14 in there now. So um, everybody's happy. So again, sorry to ramble, but hopefully um, some of what I've showed you, you'll be able to adapt to your circumstances and come up with a nice, healthy, and uh, happy tank that you can do the water changes on. Um, take care of the gravel but not have to go crazy in maintaining it um, having to do heavy you know 50% water changes 60% um, mine stays crystal clear with the purigen the filter paper and um, 